my character is such that I've always been very interested in, let's say, natural phenomena, very much like the Renaissance man. Scott's work is based on his feelings about light and, and color, and it, he has a very subtle diffused light and a very subtle color. With Scott, the realism draws you in initially, but there's something much more profound beneath that, uh, that realistic scene that makes the painting a great painting. They invite you to tell a story about how you feel, why you feel that way. It just begins the process of kind of uh, making a narration out of the uh, painting. Scott and I became very fast friends. This was about 25 years ago. We did a lot of painting together, traveled around looking for parts of small town America. We liked the kitschy aspect to America. We liked uh, fairs and old diners and, uh, you know, small town America. So we, we painted the same places, but in, in really quite different ways. His paintings would be about the light and the quality of light. They were uh, wonderful paintings. I think of myself as mostly self-taught and basically just taught myself to paint by looking at paintings and not even so much looking at original paintings because I just didn't get to the cities that much, but looking at, you know, art books. I uh, found myself drawn in particular to the uh, Flemish Renaissance painters. I identified in the Dutch and the Flemish Renaissance a uh, few things. The attention to detail I really responded to, the idea that there wasn't an unimportant square inch or part of the painting. Every, every part of the painting was equally important. If I, I was at that time developing any kind of, uh, let's say, content or, or intention in my paintings beyond just, you know, rendering or making things look realistic, it was paralleling that religious content in the Renaissance paintings with my underlying belief that religion didn't occupy the same importance in our contemporary culture that it did back then, and what it has replaced it is science and technology. If I put people in the paintings at all, they tended to be science or technological or, or, or business even uh, people. These paintings with the figures in them, say in rooms, are very much indebted to my early interest in the Renaissance paintings where these altarpieces, you know, where you'd have uh, one or two or three or four or sometimes many figures presented to the viewer. More often than not, these, these saints or whoever would be looking out at the viewer. There's something going on there between the viewer and the subject of the painting. So beyond these paintings just being exercises in realism, let's say, there was meaning implied in these paintings. Of course, another unifying aspect in my paintings is my interest in light. Light is more than just a, a let's say, a phenomenon of nature. There's something about uh, light which can identify a particular moment, whether it be a time of the year, a time of the day. The possibilities there uh, for light to suggest a moment, I find is very intriguing. The thing about Scott's paintings is that they have this atmospheric quality to them, this density of atmosphere. And to me, that conveys a sense of mood. Um, and that's true even of his landscapes. I mean, they're very uh, infused with mood, and they kind of invite you into them. I guess what my intent is, which is to do sort of in, in some ways pure atmosphere, a sense of a moment of time.
there's more than the surface in Scott's paintings. There's something beneath it. There's something more powerful about it, and that's what's um, compelling about it. There's something usually lurking there in the background, and it's that quality that invites you to tell a story. There's a well-known painting of Scott's where one of his children is laying on their bed having a nap. I was a bit aware of the, I guess, inherent sentimentality of painting babies. My solution to that was to paint him asleep in his room, but although I used toys and objects that were in the room, I sort of placed them in the painting to be a menacing influence to this sleeping child. Under the bed is painted inordinately dark. Don't look under the bed. Childhood bliss and childhood fears at the same time in the same painting. And things like that happen a lot in his work. The longer you look at them, the more you see, and not just in detail and depiction, but in meaning and different layers of the painting. I take a lot of photographs. I've done photography longer than I've done painting. It's an integral part of my seeing things. Sometimes the paintings start off as a sketch. Sometimes they start off as a photograph. In my constructing paintings, oftentimes I would put a number of photographs together, sometimes taken from different sources. Then I found out you could do this on a computer. And because I'm a gadget person, I seem to have really been sucked in by this whole idea of computer-generated photography. It's infinite, the possibilities, compared to what was available before. This drawing is the initial drawing, the very first thing I did to get an idea of, of uh, what I wanted to do in this painting. There's actually uh, dozens of photographs. These are the ones that I picked out that I felt worked the best. This is a close-up of the uh, clothes on the floor. Uh, I took a number of pictures of myself and put them all together. This is a little more refined sketch, uh, placing everybody and getting the perspective right. And uh, of course, then I scanned all the photographs into my computer and came up with a digitally constructed composite of all the photographs. It's a, not simply a matter of cutting these me and my nanny and, and Nellie out and pla pasting them. There's a lot of manipulation that went on here, dealing with scale, perspective. We're looking at a very particular moment, like a snapshot, but most snapshots don't do it for us. It's uh, hopefully more than that. Scott was trained as a photographer, and he really understands photography. He understands optics, he understands angles, um, he understands how color film works. So when he paints from a photograph, he's painting from something he understands and it has made and, and made with great skill and understanding. One of the last paintings that uh, I've done that's included in the show at the Cordova, it's called Winter Garden. I photographed that when I was just driving by the community garden. This is early in the morning, I think. And then when I got the pictures, uh, I scanned them into the computer, and basically that painting is a composite of three different views pasted together as one can do in the computer. The color cast, and when I photographed it, it, was very blue, very cool. I changed it to very warm, implying that there was somehow sun trying to come through all that fog and mist. And that was done on the computer. My wife, Nanny, and I just love collecting junk. Sometimes the very nice junk, sometimes just junk. 
but this stuff invariably ends up in paintings. And it's really a, a cross-section of the stuff that is in our house. So you can have a little sculpture, a little Mr. Red Mr. Peanut, which has shown up in so many still lives. It's just, it's, he's always there. And he's just this little beautiful little thing of red. You know, and he's funny. And uh, it's nostalgic. I live in Eden. My life is very much Edenic. That's the way I see it. I think of myself as a very lucky guy. You know, in my marriage, with my kids. My ability to live my life so that I can do my work in the studio behind my house and make a living. It's a great life. Uh, he's made his own personal landscape. He doesn't have to travel anymore. He's got his own little world right there. Scott's world. Scott shares his life with his art. Scott brings optimism without sentimentality into the world. And I think that in the late 20th century, there's no greater gift that an artist can give. <laughs>